using the ch own and ch mod so the change ownership command or ch own allows us to change the ownership of the user or the group of a file and there's various ways you could do that as we see here highlighting um, down in the command line here or the commands here ch own with root and root that would be if we want to change both the user and the group and then if we want to do uh, a shorthand of that we could do ch own root colon and that would change both the user and the group okay just changing the ownership of the file or the user's ownership would be so like a ch own root file and then just changing the group would be uh, shorthand would be colon and then root uh, and then file, right? So I want to jump to a command line here real quick so we can kind of demo that a little bit. It's fine to see it on the screen, but once we see it's typed out, uh, hopefully it sets in a little more, right? Unless you've seen it again as well. So taking a look here at our directory, let me go into root and just go into perms. Okay. Doing that ls lah get a long listing. We we'll see a different a lot of things here. Again, here is that linked file. If you see here on the left hand side, showing that it's it's a linked file. So I have a file here called new file, and I want to change the ownership to the the vagrant user. Okay, so I do a ch own. I say vagrant vagrant new file. And now we see here that, that we have, again, changed both the user and the group permissions, okay? Now, if I want to change that, just say, say I want to just change the just the group, I could do something like ch own and say, change back to root for the new file. And now we see we just changed the group permissions, okay? So I'm just showing, showing shorthand how we could do this. Um, there's also one extra command. I don't have the slides, but we could do a change group as well and give it the group name and say new file. Okay, you see there. And if I want to change it all back to the root again, I'm going to do a ch own root colon, again, just shorthand for the user and the group and say new file. And there we go, see it there, cool. All right, so taking a look at our next slide here, Change mode or the ch mod command, ch mod command. This allows us to change the permissions on a file, right? We use ls to view permissions. Uh, there are a number of other commands we can use to view permissions, such as stat, or, but usually we're going to do an ls to see permissions and then a ch mod to change them, okay? And we can represent this in two different ways. Symbolically, with read, write, execute, read, write, or read, execute, you see here, or octo format. 755644. If you're new to this, you may have been told to never chmod a file 777. And we'll talk about why you shouldn't do that. Um, or you, it may be also one of those things where you find the answer, it does fix it for you, but maybe why you wouldn't want to do that and instead find, understand how to manipulate the permissions in a way that does work for you without giving everybody read, write, and execute permissions. So let's take a look at that here. Again, some examples here. We're going to go through examples here on, on, the, on the slides, and then we'll jump to a command line. You can see it in action. So first, we have a chmod 755 file. Now, remember, earlier we said that the read, write, and execute operations or, or permissions had certain uh, values to them, right? So four, two, and one. But when we add the read, the write, and the execute, four, two, and one, that equals seven, right? So that's why we have a seven permission. The, if we do a read and execute, we'll have five. Um, if we did a read and write, that would be four. Right? So that's where these numbers kind of correlate. And we can use a ch mod command to do a couple of things and, and modify permissions in, in various ways. So for example, the first line we see here, we are setting permissions so that the owner of the file has full access, read, write, execute, and then the group and all others have read and execute permissions. Now, this is important on a directory, but maybe not on a file, right? We'll talk about why that is. The next, side we, next line we see here is going to be chmod, and I'm changing just the user, right, the user ownership. I'm going to give that the user read, write, execute permissions. I can also take away permissions if I do a chmod g for group minus rwx. We take away those permissions. And then lastly, chmod, they'd say O equals RW, 
we would be setting those permissions to exactly R and W. That first one here with a plus, that means we're going to add permissions to the current set, right? So we could add permissions to the current set, take away from the current set, and then just replace the current set as well. So let's see what that looks like on the command line. Okay. So again, we have some, some example files here. Let's do a chmod, and we'll do 777, right? Read, write, execute on all uh, user, group, and other for file. Let's do... Let's do 002, why not? And notice here we, that we have read, write, and execute. Let's say that I wanted to take away the write from all users, right? So maybe all users, we don't want them to write to that file. So chmod, let's do other minus write and say file 002. Okay, so now we see here that we took away the right bit from that user, right? So let's say that I want to take away all permissions from the group. So I might do something like chmod group minus rwx file 002. I'm going to clear my screen. H. And see, now we see here that we removed read, write, execute. Or maybe I did that wrong. Oh, read, write, execute, change that back. There you go. So we have read, execute from the group permissions, right? Now let's just change it back to a pretty standard one. So 644 for file 002. Again, just various ways that we can modify permissions using the chmod command.